Finally, one last entry in the Ralphiverse, and we will proceed to the Reddit segment and be done. Ralph has published another article, and I have to say, not to be undue in my cruelty and my uh, visceral tongue of, I don't know, <laughs> I had to continue what I'm saying, without trying to be too mean. Okay, this is one of the worst articles he's ever written. Not to be, not because of what it says. I'll let you be the judge of that. Just in general, it's some of the worst writing quality that Ralph has ever put out for his, his vlog, and it really is like low level. I will read the actual article that he posted it on Twitter, but uh, this is from the RalphRetort.com. Fall has come. He seems really obsessed with like this poetic. Uh, like association between his mood and the seasons. He says fall has come. And then he says it was like the summer, uh, the sa the sad summer or some shit. I don't know. It, it doesn't make any sense to me. I don't attribute whatever he's talking about with the seasons, but he has continued to use it as poetic allegory for uh, several years now. Fall has come. Uh, by the Ethan Ralph on September 9th, 2023. Not that long. Let's bust through. Let me get a sip of water. A young, innocent 17 year old Amanda Morris, my wife, was chatted up by a Turkish gentleman at the local mall in Greece, New York. After some flat flirting, he proposed they should go out on a date, which she eventually and reluctantly agreed to. Hey, she thought, talking herself into it. It's just a date, right? I'm 17 and about to be an adult. I should get used to doing these sorts of things. Let's try it. When it came time to go on the date, she was picked up by him at her father, Harry Morris's house. Instead of taking her to the agreed upon location, he pulled into a hotel parking lot. He asked Amanda to come inside of his hotel room for a minute while he finished getting ready. I think most of you will be able to easily predict what happened next, at least to some degree. Instead of a date, Amanda was forcibly sodomized, annually raped, by this evil cretin in a treacherous and barbarous attack against a virginal girl. When she was discarded and dropped off by the rapist, she called her mother Jolene Vitto. No relation. She confessed what happened and told her that she had been anally raped. When they went to the local hospital in order to get a rape kit to be performed, if you didn't know the performance of a rape kit is necessary to gather enough evidence and hopefully even DNA evidence to prove the guilt of a rapist. Allegedly frustrated by the amount of time it was taken, Jolene complained to the hospital staff about the procedure and took her confused, distressed daughter home instead. A rape kit was never performed, and the rapist was never brought to justice. We will never know how many other young, innocent 17-year-old girls met the same fate as Amanda did that day as a result of the cruelty and cowardice of her own mother, Jolene. I will swear to God on a stack of Bibles, the life of my deceased and beloved mother, Sandra Ralph, and the life of my daughter, Roseanne Sandra Ralph, that this story was told to me multiple times um, by Amanda Morris. It is so heinous that I could not have conjured it for you here today, that not even I could have conjured you here, not even me. So ask yourselves, if, I'm, if I am a monster based on an out-of-context two-minute and 53-second audio clip where I was secretly recorded after a long night of mixing it, alcohol, alprozolam, clearly out of my mind, then what is Jolene Vitto? I'll tell you what she is. She's a cold, wicked, vile, vicious, nasty woman. And as Mr. Trump would say, she's even worse than a monster because she hides and tries to portray herself as one of the good people. Well, Jolene, I have some bad news for you. You're not one of the good people. You're one of the lowest, sickest, dirtiest meat bags I've ever had the displeasure of coming across. I post this so that my daughter will one day know just who the Morris family 
specifically Jolene and Harry really are. You wanted the truth. There's your truth. Do your worst and leak whatever you will on me, because I will no longer care about this mortal coil of the fate of my life before I finally shuffle off it. I will have nothing else to write or say about Amanda, Jolene, or Harry, as long as I live. If, for whatever reason, I must refer to or allude to Amanda, also known as May because of our work together on the kill stream, I will never again use her name. She is no longer recognizable to me anyway. Still, I hope that she's happy and blessed during the duration of her days. Even now, even after everything that's been said and done, I still love her deeply. I think I always will. Thank you for getting me through the death of my mother and for being there for me unceasingly during that time. I would not be here today were it not for the amazing woman I once knew back then. My mother loved you as well, and you know that. That's why you named your daughter after her. I thank you for being there during the hardest part of her life. Uh, the prolonged and tragic end of it on her behalf. We met a little over three years ago. I do not regret the time we spent together. I cherish it. Fall has come in May. It's long since gone. However, I will pray that God, my mother, Sandra, who I miss so much, and especially my daughter, Roseanne Ralph, one day understand why I told you this here today. I ask for forgiveness from them all. The story was already publicly known, by the way. I only wrote this to give you the entire context behind it. So I don't know what... I never understand what Ralph wants. I guess he wants to make Harry upset. He wants to make he wants to ruin Jolene, his wife's mother wants to ruin her life, so that people find the story. Like people that she knows find the story and then be like, "Oh, your daughter got raped." I didn't know that. Did you know there's an article on the internet about how your daughter got raped? Did anyone tell you this that your daughter got raped? I didn't. I didn't know that about you. Now I do. I guess that's what he's going for. The strange tactic, especially once he wants to profess his love for her at the end. It's, uh, it's interesting. I don't know if that kind of thing pays off. Um, well, that's it. There's also a new um, De Gunt song by MC Jarbo, which will be our outro song for the day if you haven't heard it already. Oh, the, I mean... The video is pretty unforgivable. I know that he's like on drugs and drunk, but like that doesn't really change anything. Yeah, I mean, it's like what Dick said. When you had Dick on, Dick's like, of course you would do that. Have anyone, has anyone ever listened to the Ralph record? Do you guys think it's like a joke? Like, that's the least surprising video I've ever seen in my entire life. And he laughs at this and it's like, yeah, so. But then to blame it on alcohol is just kind of like a cop out. Like, okay, you were drunk, but you mean to tell me that you're like a perfect, you don't do that? I'm not even say that you're perfect. You don't do that when you're like sober? Okay. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.